Welcome back, everybody. My name is Taylor Martin. This is the best MEDC. And this past weekend, I went to Blade Show, and it was amazing. It was better than I could have ever expected. It was a little different. It was it was a little odd. There were some missing manufacturers. I think the turnout was a little lower. I don't know. For me, it seemed pretty normal compared to 2019. I mean, a lot of people wanted to get out of the house, but this is the first time in over a year that many of us have been able to go out and do something like this. And the turnout was great. It was really weird at first, just seeing and talking to people in person and socializing. And man, it was long overdue. The show was amazing. I got to meet so many of you. So, so many of you came and shook my hand and said hello and that was amazing. And I didn't get to experience the show in the way that I anticipated. I was planning to shoot some videos and talk to some makers and manufacturers, and I expected to meet a couple of you, but man, you guys were there in droves. Uh, I basically spent my entire weekend meeting you guys, and that was amazing. It was really, really humbling and awesome to get to see so many of you, um, honestly. So much better than how I expected Blade Show to go, even though I didn't come away with any videos. But what I did come away with is all of this stuff. There's a ton of stuff inside this bag, and I am so excited to share it with you guys. I'm so pumped on all of this stuff. So that's what this video is. This is just everything that I got at Blade Show 2021, minus some stickers and hats and shirts, because there was lots of that. But all the gear, all the gear that I got at Blade Show 2021. And with that said, Let's do the damn thing. Okay, let's get inside this bag. Uh, we can start with the bag if you want. We can come back to the bag later. I don't know the best way to go about this. There is a lot to get through. There was a lot of really awesome stuff at Blade Show and I came home with most of what I wanted. I did miss a few pieces. I wanted a Koenig Arius. Of course, they sold out in minutes and they were gone long before I got there on Friday and Saturday. And I don't even know if they had first come first serve on Sunday, no clue. But I didn't really get to see a lot of the show. That was the thing, like what you see here in this bag, that's basically what I got to see. So yeah, I missed a bunch. I didn't see a lot of tables. I don't even know what was announced at Blade Show. I was there and I missed it <laughs> in the best way possible. It was, it was really, really fun. I had the most fun I've had in a very, very long time. So since we already have it here, let's talk about the bag. This is the Vanquist Dendrite. This is very similar to the Dad's Fanny that I've been carrying a lot lately, but the Dad's Fanny kind of failed me a little bit this show just because I had so much to pack into a bag and I didn't want an actual backpack. I wanted something light and small kind of to restrict myself from getting too much. But I did fill the dad's fanny up very, very quickly. So I stopped by Van Quist's table and I'm like, yo, I need a better bag, hook me up. And this is what they gave me. Just an aside, Mike over at Van Quist, killer dude, hilarious, love that guy. But this is what he came up with. This is the Dendrite. I believe it's like four liters. That's what he said. We also have the Hydra water bottle holder. This is another add-on that you can get for $25. It does come off just kind of attach it to the strap, but this holds up to, I think he said a 64 ounce bottle. It holds my Nalgene that I carry every single day with ease. Just slides right in there, thanks to all the elastic cord. And you can put this around the top and just kind of cinch it down. Very secure and you could easily hold a bigger bottle than this, but that's how I got through the show. When I needed water, I had it on me. And when you're not using it, you can just kind of smack it down and it'll Velcro to itself. Um, and then you've got just a front pocket here for some accessories, quick access. There is an inside pocket, same deal, just a small little pocket for quick access. If you wanna throw some more important stuff on the outside that you wanna get into the whole bag for, or stuff that needs to be accessed more frequently. And then you have this big spacious bag. Mike also tossed in this. This is the sticky panel two by seven and it just sticks to the back. So the back is like a hook and loop, the soft side of a hook and loop. This has the rough side and this just presses into the back so you can add more organization to the bag if that's what you need. Um, lots of pockets and elastic and space. And there's another zippered pocket right here, which you can throw more things down into. This thing is extremely well-made, very spacious, and I love all of the organization. So again, this is the Vanquist Dendrite and this whole setup right here with the two by seven sticky panel, the water bottle holder on here, and the bag itself, 
Uh, this whole setup is about $100. The bag is, I believe, 60 bucks. The water bottle holder's right at 25, and then that sticky panel's, I think, just under $15. So, not a cheap setup, but this is absolutely killer. I wore this all weekend long, and I plan to continue carrying this thing every day. Super handy. Um, I really, really like this thing a lot. I would go as far to say as I like this a little better than the Dad's Fenny. I think they serve different purposes, even though they are very similar. Uh, but this, I believe, is going to be my daily carry bag. Just a little EDC pouch, fanny pack, shoulder sling. Uh, I think this is going to be the one that I carry every day for some time. Uh, really, really like it. The next thing I want to talk to you about is this wallet. Uh, I'm not going to lie, I was a little bit of a skeptic when I first saw this wallet. It's made here locally in Charlotte. And this thing looks bulkier on video and in photos than it actually is. It's still thicker than the wallet I was carrying when I went to Blade Show, and it's definitely heavier. Um, I was carrying the Giltec Raw or Rapid Access Wallet, which is just a single piece of titanium. It's a little frame that holds your cards, and one piece of that titanium has been bent up, a little positive pressure to keep your cards against the frame. Very minimal, very lightweight. This is almost like the polar opposite of that. Both very minimalist titanium wallets, but uh, as far as minimalist wallets go, this one's a little more complex. That's what I'm getting at. Uh, this is the F22 Raptor from Vice Hardware. And the way this works, as was explained to me by Cody, the guy who makes it, uh, you put your finger here and you can put your thumb there and just push forward and it releases your cards when you let go these elastic bands, which I think is actually just a single elastic band wound back and forth pulls the plate back down. You've got these four pivot points and it just articulates forward and backward and clamps your cards down with just enough pressure to keep them in. And then on the backside, you've got this little money clip and it's just a magnet in what looks like some carbon fiber textured stuff. It has no problem holding these uh, quartered bills in place. You could also half them if you want. I'm not a huge fan of the look of this, but he said he makes this in different materials and sometimes in leather and stuff. So. Um, very cool wallet. I think it's really interesting and very different. And although I was not a believer at first, uh, I really like this wallet. I think it's very neat, very unique, and uh, works really well. This particular wallet will set you back $300, but there are different versions. There's an aluminum version that's a little cheaper. And right here and right here, these are removable plates, so you can kind of customize this wallet how you want. And if you don't want this money clip, just take out these two torque screws. I believe it's a T8 and you can remove this and bolt this back down and you have a slimmer wallet with no money clip. It's made right here in Charlotte. And the guy who makes these, just a stellar guy, had a lot of fun and talked to him a ton at Blade Show. Um, so yeah, this is the Vice Hardware F22 Raptor wallet. Really, really cool wallet. Let's just go ahead and pull out this whole thing because this is what most, most of what I'm gonna be talking about is in here. And then we're gonna grab this as well. We'll talk about the rest of the stuff a little later. Uh, and let's hit this first. So the first knife I picked up, I believe this was the first knife I picked up at the show. I, I wasn't planning on. In fact, I didn't go into Blade Show with a plan at all. No plan. Uh, in fact, the only plan I had was that I wanted to do pocket dumps of anybody who stopped me. I quickly learned that was not going to work out. But uh, as far as things to buy, I didn't have my sights set on anything in particular. I didn't really have any plan going into it. I knew I would probably buy something, but I didn't know what. I didn't want to go into it with any kind of... Uh, bias or anything. I wanted to see stuff in person and if I liked it, I picked it up. This is the Chris Reeve Mnandi with Makassar Ebony Scales. I believe that's how it's pronounced. Probably not. Um, this is the newer version with the thumb hole cutout. So it used to be like a thumb pocket or a nail nick. Now it is milled all the way through. This is an S45 VN and it is just a beautiful gentleman uh, dress knife. Like It's just so, so nice. And it is a one-handed open knife, but it's not something you're gonna be flicking open. You can't spidey flick it. You can't thumb flick it. There's just nothing to flick. And that's okay. It's meant to be classy, dressy. You don't need to be flicking open a knife at a dressy event. And uh, this thing is absolutely perfect for that. I'm very excited about uh, using or carrying this knife for dressy events. And uh, the way it was explained to me when I was talking to Tim, he said his dad used to carry this as like a tie clip. He said he doesn't know if he ever wore it as a tie clip, uh, but he would clip it right there on his shirt. And uh, all you see when it's clipped like that is the clip, uh, the way this is made. And that that's really, really neat. So uh, next time I wear a tie, I'm gonna try it 
Now, I won't be upset if it doesn't work, but uh, that is one reason I picked it up. Just a, a dressy, classy knife that I can carry to weddings or anything like that. Formal events, that's what this is for. It does come with this little sheath. And once again, this is the Chris Reeve Nandi, and it will set you back $400 if you can find it in stock. Next up, let's pull out this guy back here. This is a newer knife, not brand new. They came out a while back, but they sold out instantly to no surprise. But this is the upgraded version of the ever popular Civivi Elementum, and it is different. And I think all of the changes are great. So just to go over some of the differences, the first one I noticed is the size, it's bigger. And it's not scaled up, it's just, longer because the blades are about the same width, but the handle's longer, the blade is longer, but they're just, they're just not, it's just, it's just kind of elongated. Um, so I think that's a really good change. This fits my hand much, much better than the original Elementum, which is fine. I can get a full four finger grip on it, but it's just a little tighter. This one is a little more cozy, got a little more room to spare without being overbearingly large. The other big difference is the opening mechanism and the lock mechanism. This one is a flipper with a liner lock. This one is a button lock and there's no other opening mechanism. You just have to push the button and flick your wrist. Uh, very much like a bug out with the access lock and way people can just kind of flip it or the Malibu, but no flipper tab. Um, the other thing is that it locks closed. So that button keeps it locked closed and you can't open it any other way. The big difference, which is very subtle, it's a small change, but a big difference is the way that it's constructed. I always felt that the Elementum felt a little cheap. It looked a little cheap because the way that the liners kind of extended past the scales, especially down here where the lanyard hole is, it just kind of always a appeared kind of cheap to me. Whereas on this one, the, the liners are flush or almost flush with the scales and they moved the lanyard hole to be within the backspacer here. So I just think this is an improvement on all fronts, even though there's no other opening method and you may not like that it's just a button lock, just on paper and, and in the hand, this thing feels, looks, and is better. Uh, the other change is the blade steel. So this is the D2 variant, I'm pretty sure. I don't know, it's got my <laughs> channel name engraved on it, but it doesn't say what blade steel it is. I imagine it's D2. This one is Sandvik Steel 14C28N. So lots of changes, but still, I guess in sole, the same knife, sort of. They're, they're very different, but they're still both elementums, apparently. Uh, I will be very pleased if they make all these same changes to the original Elementum and release it as like an Elementum 2 or something. Anyway, I'm rambling. This is the Button Lock Elementum. Uh, they are sold out right now. I was told that they will be back in stock in a few weeks, like the end of June, early July, I believe. Don't hold me to that. Um, just keep your eye out and they will set you back about 66 bucks, give or take. The next knife that I picked up, we'll just talk about this one very quickly because it's just a classic SD, but Blade HQ was tossing these things around a lot at the show. This is the Dessert Warrior version of the classic SD. I think it's hilarious. I will definitely be carrying this thing. And just a quick shout out to the guys over at Blade HQ. They absolutely made the show. They're all so, so friendly and just genuine people, super hospitable. Um, they were just super welcoming to me and, and just made the show. They were just great people, good friends. Love you guys. Next up, I, I knew that I was gonna have to grab one of these as soon as I got to the show. They had signs everywhere and I would have been a little upset if I didn't grab one. This is the new bug out, I guess, technically. It's a uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works exclusive with M4 steel with a Coyote Tan Blade G10 OD Green scales. And uh, there were a few different blade options for this one, but this is the colorway I had to get, right? Like I had to. I love tan and OD together. It's just a wonderful combination. And this is easily my favorite bug out. I've had titanium scales from Bashi on a bug out. I've had my Carta scales. I've had the new 535-5 with carbon fiber and the aluminum backspacer and S90V. This is the best bug out I've ever had. For sure, it came with perfect centering, great action. This thing is perfect out of the box. And I like the way this one looks the most too. So I had to grab it and uh, I've been carrying this one. I, I like it a lot. I really like the bug out again. I've fallen in and out of love with the bug out. This is my favorite one so far. And that is the Smoky Mountain Knife Works exclusive M4 bug out 
Uh, I don't know if they're still available. I know they're gone when they're gone, but I don't know if they were sold out at the end of the show. I picked mine up Sunday afternoon and they still had some, so maybe they're not sold out and maybe you can still pick one up. I don't know, but if you can, get it because it's awesome. I know you guys are, are probably waiting with bated breath for one of these knives, but I have to talk about this one. And technically, this was not a Blade Show pickup. This is something I got before Blade Show, but this was, it, it stole the show, honestly. Uh, I had so many people asking me about this knife and so many people wanting to see it and hold it and, and just impressed by it. Count myself in that group. I'm really impressed with this knife. It's smaller than something I would normally carry. This thing stayed in my pocket most of the show and I just love the knife. I think it's really cool. So this is the Runt 5 prototype. So I got it last week, um, but I did carry it to the show and carry it most of the time at the show. So this is one of the ones with the bronze aluminum scales. It's got a mosaic inlay button. And this was one of the prototypes. So it's got the CPM 154 blade steel that was hand ground by Mike Irie. Obviously this one is a mirror finish in the reverse Tonto. There's also a Warncliffe. And this one is number 33 of 40, deep carry pocket clip, just a wonderful, wonderful little knife. Kicks like a mule, the action on it is so great and it feels really good in the hand. They have also aluminum scales, they got different buttons, they've got textured scales. And there was also some bronze aluminum ones with engravings on them, absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I, I really, really like this knife. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> this undoubtedly gets the most attention of everything I picked up at Blade Show. This is an Enrique Pena Custom Mula with Butterscotch Micarta Scales. That's all I know about it. Uh, I know that it's a custom. I know I probably shouldn't own it, but I do. And I don't know anything else. I don't know the blade steel. I'm guessing probably CPM 154, but I don't know for sure. Um, this thing is immaculate. It's perfect. The action is great. Lockup is great. Perfect centering. It's exactly what you would expect from an Enrique Pena custom. And it's, it's the config I would want. This thing is just so beautiful. I mean, look at that knife. And I feel lucky to have picked it up. Although I'm not going to tell you how I got it into story. So I had the production Mula, the drop point before, and the drop point just didn't do anything for me, but I picked this one up recently. This is the sheep's foot version of the X series front flipper Mula uh, with thumb studs. And this one I carried a lot since I got it. I really like this knife a lot. This was my favorite Pena until this one. Um, so just, just a little comparison, a visual comparison of the X series, the production version versus a custom. The only thing about the, the production that I like more than the custom is the clip. Now, I think this is a little too like techno futuristic mech for this particular knife, which looks very classy, but I do like these clips more than, than the custom clip, just because this one's very squared and plain. I think if it were a little more rounded, I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel the same way. This knife is absolutely one of my favorite knives. I'd say already in top five, it's just perfect. And uh, this one's up there too, really high up there. I, I love the Peña Mula, but again, the Drop Point X series didn't do it for me, but the, the Sheep's Foot does. So I, I don't know what the deal is there, but very happy and I feel very lucky to have picked up a Peña Custom. Let's talk about this real quick. Uh, again, this isn't anything new. This is just a Keybar Junior, but this one I had to pick up because it was more me than I think anything I've seen. OD Micarta on one side with bronze hardware and bronze titanium on the other. What? There was another thing that I saw at the show that I didn't know existed. So this is a reversible clip for the Keybar Junior. Very deep carry clip. Uh, if you, you would install this on the inside of the scale, but basically it goes uh, like this or like this and you have a deep carry clip. It doesn't work with the way I have this thing set up because of the way the keys are. It just didn't work out for me, uh, but that's a really cool addition to, to the Keybar Junior. It's a deep carry clip. I didn't know they made that. That's really cool. And the clip is only $13. Uh, this Keybar Junior, this exact config, I believe is like 50 bucks though. The Micarta and Titanium, but this thing is hot. Talk about this pin really quickly. Next, this is from Mike Bond or Tai 2 Designs. This is the Bolt Liner Super Shorty. So I've talked about Super Shorty Tech Liners before. Those are the ones with the magnetic caps. Um, really cool fidgety pins, but this is just his take on a bolt action in that same 
design. So uh, looks just like the super shorty tech liner without the cap and it has a bolt action mechanism. I looked it up, this would set you back about a hundred bucks. Just a very small, very compact titanium bolt action pin. So if you want something as compact as it gets with bolt action, I, I think this would be the pin. The other pin that I got from the show is a pin that I've had, but just in the long version because I made it back in Rick's shop months and months and months ago, maybe even years ago. I don't remember when we did that video. So this is a collaboration between myself, Tactile Turn and Zero Feud or my buddy Rick. There is a uh, topo clip on this thing with a blue or blurple bolt. And you have bronze anodized stone washer tumbled pin body. This thing is really sick. And I feel that way because this is what I made myself when I had the opportunity to make whatever I wanted with this pin. This is what I did. So we wanted to make them available to you guys. So they were at the show and they're gonna be available again very, very soon. So if you want one of these, keep your eyes peeled. Go follow Tactile Turn and Zero Feud and myself over on Instagram and we'll let you know when these are gonna drop again, there will be more. So this is probably my favorite pickup or one of my favorite pickups from the show. This is a custom flashlight from Charles Wiggins or CWF and this is the Micro Arcadian. It is the clicky version, which I believe is more rare. Why are we blinking? What are we blinking for? Oh no, what am I programming? Uh, let's go with two. Okay, that was in programming mode. Sorry about that. I was messing with this thing before I went live. So this is the clicky version of the Micro Arcadian and it's just a really, really powerful flashlight in roughly a AAA size. So this actually takes a 10 440 cell instead of a AAA, which is about the same size battery without the button. Um, very, very small battery with a ton of output in this thing. This flashlight gets up to 650 lumens. Of course, it doesn't stay there very long, but to have that just sudden burst of light out of such a small flashlight, very great. And it has thermal regulation in there as well. So it's not going to overheat. It will ramp down as the heat builds up so it doesn't overheat or burn you. So that is really, really cool. These flashlights, I believe, uh, run about 425 regularly in this titanium version. Um, the twist version is a little easier to come by. I think they may be available on a site. Don't quote me on that, but the clicky version is not. I, this one, I'm very glad I was able to get one of these. And let me just show you a size comparison really quickly. This is a flashlight I took to show and probably my most carried flashlight, the Okluma DC Zero. The second most carried light for me for sure is the Prometheus Beta QRV2. So this is also a AAA flashlight. Obviously it is smaller, doesn't have a clicky mechanism. So that makes sense. But the output on these things. So there's your size comparison. This is a 14500 cell. This is a 10440 cell. And then we have a AAA flashlight. But let's just show you the brightnesses on these. So this is the max brightness on the Okluma DC0. And we're gonna get this one up to 100% as well. This is a 14500 and this is a 10440. And this one is brighter. It is distinctly brighter. It's got more of a hot spot and this one's all spilled. And let's do the same thing with the Beta QR V2. So that is full brightness, like 150-ish lumens on this thing. And this is 650 lumens on the Micro Arcadian like 150 with the Beta QR V2. It is a massive, massive difference. And again, I don't need the 650 lumens often, but the fact that it's there when I need it is the main reason I don't like carrying AAA lights. Um, there have been times where just 150 doesn't quite cut it. Like it's bright, but it's not bright enough. This thing solves that problem. It still has a little moonlight mode, which is the most used mode for me. For sure. Since I've already talked about one thing that wasn't from the show, this came in the day before I left. So I don't necessarily consider it something I got at Blade, obviously, but I did get to meet this guy at Blade, a nice guy machine company. And this is his pry bar, the Mr. Nice Bar. Really, really nice guy, really cool guy. He's actually got a YouTube channel, which I'll link down below and, and up here. Um, but this is a really cool pry bar, titanium pry bar, integrated clip, it's got this really subtle taper to it. And I, I like the design. I think the name is really funny. And then on the back here, it's got ingredients. It says 6AL4V titanium. 
that's just funny. Anyway, I just wanted to show you that really quickly. A really cool pry bar, something a little different with a new design. Love the integrated titanium clip. I think it's funny. The, the name is, is cheeky and funny and uh, really cool. It's been in my pocket since Friday and, or Thursday even, and uh, really cool. All right, there's only a couple of things left down in here, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull them all out and we'll talk about them one by one. Uh, I did pick up scales, we'll talk about this quickly. I picked up some scales, some OD green scales for my Bradford Guardian 3. I was trying to remove the old scales with the provided two um, custom spanner bits that they require to change the scales and both spanner bits snapped on me. So I can't put these on my, my Guardian 3 yet, but they have, I reached out to them, they're gonna send me some more bits so that I can swap the scales. But I've wanted some OD green scales from my Guardian 3 for a long time. Um, so I'll be swapping these out and I'll probably be putting these up for sale uh, sooner rather than later. Next up, we'll talk about my buddy Jamie for a second. So he tossed this in with my order, just a little, uh, I'm not sure what this would be called. It's not really a coin, but Kind of like a coin, a teardrop, stay tough, JRW with the tough guy. And then I have this in a Greg Stevens design slip. This is an accomplice in brass. This is the heavy, it's very thick and heavy. It's like a, it's a ring. That's what it is, guys. It's just a brass ring. You just wear this on your finger and go about your day. Um, no, you know what this is. It's, it's a fidget toy. <laughs> uh, anyway, I had to pick one of these up to show support for my buddy Jamie. He's a killer dude, super awesome. Love hanging out with him and Rick. Um, and I've wanted an accomplice since I saw it. I think it's a cool design, unique, different. And uh, I love everything he's got going on. I love the nail logo. I love the tough guy logo and the teardrop. He is just killing it right now and uh, love to see him doing so well. And I, I wanted to show support while there were some first come first serve for some accomplices. Uh, thanks, Jamie. You're awesome. Keep slaying. And you guys go check him out and follow him. I did a pocket dump with him a while back. So if you're going to go see that video, I'll link it as well. But um, really cool guy. Glad I could finally pick one of these up. Just showing support for the homies. And then I also have this also in a Greg Stevens design coin slip. Uh, this is a high tech chip, the Celtic chip in brass. Uh, I met Michael at the show finally after talking for a few months and he's also a really good guy, hilarious, um, can't take anything he says seriously, but he's a cool guy and these high tech chips, everybody wants one and for good reason, really cool, just something to fidget with, keep in your pocket, tinker with, throw into your Instagram photos, but it's, uh, it's highly sought after and they're really cool and I like them and Greg, also a good guy, I got to meet him, he threw in this slip when I was at his booth. Uh, so I can keep my coins in there. It doesn't work for just the high techs. You can throw whatever coin you want into it. It'll just keep all your coins nice and cozy in your pocket, I guess, or your bag or in your photos. It'll keep them cozy in your photos. But there you go. That was a high tech chip and a Greg Stevens design coin pouch slip thing. So I was talking about Mike Bond earlier. He's the guy who makes the tie two design stuff. That is that is Mike Bond. Um, so bolt liner, tech liner. He also makes these high tech chips. And we have the new release from him from CRKT. So this is Bond Design. This is the Campano, and it is a spring gate or carabiner. He said it's not a bottle opener. It'd probably work for it, but he said it's not really designed to be a bottle opener. Um, but it is a slip joint knife. And just as a fair warning, do not put your finger here when you're cutting with this because it is a slip joint. It doesn't lock. So you'll be pushing that down. It does have a half stop. So you'll protect your hand, but still like, don't do it. Don't put your finger here. There is jimping. The jimping that you should be gripping when you're using this knife is right here. So if you grip this and put your finger there, this locks. It puts downward pressure on the blade and it will kind of, it doesn't lock it, but it kind of secures it in place. So when you're using this, push here. But this is the CRKT Campano. That's all there is to it, really. It's got a cool little kind of steampunky design, this stonewashed or battle-washed black with this bronze accent for the spring gate and this ring. Um, cool little design and a functional carabiner with a, an actual usable knife. I've got many carabiners with knives that are not usable at all. This is very usable and handy, and it clips to your belt loop, and you can carry your keys on it if you want to, but 
There you go, that is the CRKT Campano from Mike Bond. And the very, very last thing from the show that I picked up, no, the, actually this was the very first thing I purchased at the show, but the last thing we're gonna talk about is the Greg Stevens Design watch that I purchased. Um, everything he does is just so, so good. He did all these slips that we talked about, and he's just a killer dude, but this is the if you can see here, GSD 3A in the Explorer variant. It's stainless with an OD green dial, plexiglass crystal, and then it says chrome hands, uh, and that's the birth date of it. I know that it has the Miyota 9015 movement inside, so this is an automatic. He also has a hand wind. It comes with a spring bar tool, and you get a leather strap, a custom strap, and a NATO with your purchase. So that is a really thick thick, nice NATO strap. I knew that Greg made watches before I met him. Um, I'd seen some, he does some Burnley collaborations, but I saw this watch on his wrist at dinner on Friday night, and it's just a beautiful, simple Explorer homage watch. Had to get it, I just had to. I love plexiglass crystals and just a very simple watch, and he makes these really, really nice leather NATO straps, just nice leather straps in general. He's a, he's a leather worker, he makes beautiful leather goods. And uh, I just, I think this is a very cohesive design here. This strap, this watch, I love this OD green dial. And it, it says OD green, I keep saying OD green, it is very faintly green. It is more gray than anything, kind of has this like milky gray look to it. But it is kind of a green tinge and I don't know, I saw this and I absolutely loved it, had to grab it, but this was a $500 watch. And uh, yeah, I know I've been wearing my Garmin every day, but I don't know how much longer I'm gonna do that because I really, really miss wearing uh, analog watches. I miss analog watches so much, but I track my steps. I'm just torn, how do I, how do, I do this? I don't know what to do exactly, but uh, I wanted to pick this up from the show to show support for Greg, who seems like a really awesome guy. And plus I liked it a lot. I really liked the look of this watch. So there you go. That is the GSD 3A Explorer variant. I got so many great things from the show. It would be really difficult to pick like a single favorite thing. I think if I had to, it would be a massive toss up between the CWF and the Panya Mula. Uh, probably the, the Mula because it's just kind of hard to get and it's something I've been after for a long time. Um, but the, the CWF is just it kind of checks all the boxes too so lots of really cool pickups from the blade show and uh, i'm just super fortunate and super happy to get all of it and meet everybody that i did meet at the show if you came and said hello thank you so much you helped make this show one of the best experiences of my life um but yeah that's the haul from blade show 2021 um Oh boy. That's it guys, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, be sure to hit that thumbs up button down below and subscribe to see more stuff like this in the future. And hit that notification bell so you're notified when I upload new videos. If you wanna support what I'm doing here, everything I talked about in this video will be linked down below. You can also support many of the awesome makers from this community down below as well. Uh, you can also go to carrycommission.com or carry.best to buy gear and merch directly from me. And you can go to patreon.com forward slash best MEDC if you want to support there. You can find us in social in most places at best MEDC. But with that said, and until next time, carry on.